Sape satta bhavantu sukhitatta bhavantu sukhitatta Hello, I'm Dave Jacobson, also known as Dharmasar Taro, and I'm here with the 18th episode of Nibbana, the secret treasure of the Buddhas. The last time we were discussing how the commentators, especially Buddha Ghosh, had distorted the message of the Buddha by casting it as a yogic religious path instead of a dharmic path of surrender, which is the way the Buddha portrays it. In fact, he actually argues against the Buddha in his commentaries, especially Visuddhimagga. So unfortunately, Visuddhimagga has become kind of the Bible of Orthodox Buddhism, Theravada Buddhism anyway. And so uh, this has created a lot of misunderstanding in people's minds. And because they're not practicing with right view, they're not getting the result. and They're not becoming enlightened. So I wanted to clear this up that when you eliminate craving, this is the key, this is the door to enlightenment, despite what Buddha Ghosh or anybody else says. Let me read from the Ahara Sutta. Monks, there are these four nutriments for the maintenance of beings who have come into being, or for the support of those in search of a place to be born. Which four? Physical food, gross or refined. Contact as the second. Intellectual intention, the third. And consciousness, the fourth. These are the four nutriments for the maintenance of beings who have come into being or for the support of those in search of a place to be born. So you see, we talked before about how Paticca Samuppada, Dependent origination is like a line of dominoes standing one next to the other. And when you tip over the first one, all the rest fall down. Now, some people think that karma or kama determines all of our choices and that we don't really have a choice between, let's say, taking the path of yoga and the path of the Buddha. But that's not actually the case. Kama is more like a bank account. If we want to buy something, let's say we want to buy a car, we have to check our bank account and see if we have enough balance, isn't it? Otherwise we have to take a loan. <laughs> so when we want something, when we desire something, our comma is like the fuel or the, the bank account balance that allows that purchase or doesn't allow it, as the case might be. If we want something, for example, for which we don't have adequate karmic balance, we won't get it. It won't happen because of a lack of a fuel. But that's different from what the Buddha is talking about here. Here the Buddha is talking about these four things as nutriments. Physical food, and that can be food that you eat, or it can be air, subtle physical food. Or it can even be impressions of the senses. Contact. Contact is when the senses come in contact with their objects. So this is also a type of nutriment. Intellectual intention. So intention is a kind of nutriment without which we cannot develop being. We cannot come into the world and manifest. And finally, consciousness the fourth. And why is that? Because what we give our consciousness to, what we give our attention to, grows. Whether it's positive attention or negative intention, negative consciousness. I want this, I don't want that. I like this, I don't like that. Either kind of attention, either kind of consciousness, either kind of intention will cause the thing that is the object to grow. This is why we are uh, always taught 
to keep a positive attitude, to keep our mind on the things that we want, not on the things we don't want. Because by giving them attention, by giving them our consciousness, we actually feed them. And that's quite literally true. So if we don't want something, the best way to deal with it is not to think about it at all, not to put our attention on it at all. I want to go a little bit more into the cycle of Paticca Samupada and show how these different kinds of nutriment are related to the process of becoming. I'm going to continue to read from Ahara Sutta. Now, these four nutriments have what as their cause, what as their origination, what as their source, what as that which brings them into play. These four nutriments have craving as their cause, craving as their origination, craving as their source, craving as that which brings them into play. So now the Buddha identifies craving as the source, the cause, the origination, the uh, catalyst that brings these different types of nutriment into play. The thing that connects them, the source of nutriment with the object of nutriment. And what is that? Craving. So when we crave something, we desire it, we lust after it, we want it, or in the opposite way, the negative way, we don't want it, we don't like it, we don't want it to come or happen or come into being. So either way, craving for or against something actually brings it nutriment. It is like a catalyst that causes the digestion of that nutriment and forms the things that we either want or don't want, depending on our craving. Now, craving, of course, is an item in the process of dependent origination, paticca samupada. So here we can see the whole process, and we can see that craving is actually pretty far down. So then the Buddha goes to analyze this. And this craving has what as its cause, what as its origination, what as its source, what as that which brings it into play, Feeling. Now, Buddha says that feeling is of three kinds, positive, negative, and neutral. So when we have a feeling about something, uh, we begin to crave it. Either we crave it because we like it or we crave it because we don't like it. Uh, I don't want this. I do want that. And the things that we don't care about, well, we don't crave them. We simply throw those uh, perceptions, those experiences, in the dustbin of our minds. <laughs> that's where we miss a lot of really good things, but that's another story. For today, I'm trying to show how craving and desire are actually the root of becoming. And when we eliminate craving, as the Buddha said, then we very easily attain Nibbana. So let's go on. The Buddha says, And this feeling has what as its cause? Contact. So now we're going up the process of dependent origination from being and becoming back to the origin. And this contact has what as its cause? The six sense media. Six sense media are the eyes, the ears, the nose, the tongue, the skin, or the body, and the mind. So we have these six senses, according to the Buddha, and when they contact their objects, we have feelings. And when we have those feelings, we crave them. And because of that craving, we uh, feed them and they come into being. But let's go a step back, or a few steps back. These six sense media have what as their cause? Name and form. 
Now we've talked about name and form quite a bit here. Name and form, Nama Rupa, means basically our ontology, our background view of the world and what is possible to be, what is possible to exist in the world. Now, if our ontology does not include, for example, these states of being given by the Buddha, then for all practical purposes, they don't exist for us. They will wind up becoming neutral perceptions and getting thrown on the garbage heap of unwanted feelings, irrelevant feelings, perceptions, and then we don't feed them and so they don't grow. This is why I always say, everybody has spiritual experiences. But because most people don't recognize them, they lose them. They don't feed them, so they don't grow. Instead, we feed the things that we have strong feelings for, strong perceptions of, the things that we want or don't want. And this is what drives our process of becoming, craving. Craving is the food. Craving is the nutriment. So let's go back a step further. This name and form has what as its cause? Consciousness. In other words, not only the amount, but the kind, the quality of consciousness that we direct into certain, towards certain objects determines what comes into being in our lives. Consciousness is one of these four nutriments, remember, back in the beginning? So, the problem of choice is very easily understood in the Buddha's teaching by consciousness. Consciousness is awareness. We are a space of awareness, and we come into being for the purpose of experiencing pleasure, ecstasy, self-forgetting. And what's funny about that is that we create a self in order to be so that we can forget the self in moments of ecstasy. <laughs> it's paradoxical, but that's how it looks from where I sit. We don't have to be. We don't have to come in to be. As the Buddha says, uh, the four nutriments are the maintenance of beings who have come into being and the support of those in search of a place to be born. So when we're in search of a place to be born means we're not yet manifest. We're simply a space of awareness and we're looking for an opportunity to come into being, to be born. Why? Well, one answer to that is karma. We may have created seeds of desire in the previous life that were unfructified. And because of that, these causes are driving us to take birth in another life. Or we have developed an intention to come into this life to be a person and to experience these things that we crave. So in either way, our consciousness is aimed towards or drawn towards certain experiences, certain phenomena that we have either a liking or a disliking towards. And in this way, we fashion the being that we are going to become by the process of dependent origination. So finally, this consciousness has what as its cause? Fabrication. The fabrication of I and mine. Now, consciousness and fabrication, and fabrication and name and form. Consciousness and name and form and fabrication is a tight little feedback loop right at the top, right at the origin, the source of the process of becoming, Paticca Samupada. So, how we direct our consciousness and how we structure our name and form, the type of fabrications and the quality of fabrications that we create. Fabrication is also intention. It's also desire. It's based on ignorance. 
thinking that we want things to be other than the way they are, right? This determines how we come into being. This determines the type of body and mind that we attain. This determines the quality of our birth and embodiment. And of course, the subsequent quality of our experience here in the world. So then the Buddha concludes, and this fabrication has what as its cause? What as its origination? What as its source? What as that which brings it into play? Fabrication has ignorance as its cause, ignorance as its origination, ignorance as its source, ignorance as that which brings it into play. So the problem is, we are ignorant of the process of paticca samuppada. We're ignorant of the process of becoming, of coming into being and how this process is a series of interlocking causes that once it begins, gathers momentum until it results in birth, which then results in decay and death, which then results in suffering. So this is the process and this is how we choose if we can eliminate craving, then we can eliminate becoming and birth, craving, desire, <laughs> and suffering. So yes, craving, eliminating craving is the key to attaining Nibbana. But how do we eliminate craving? After all, we have to eat, we have to drink, we have to sleep, we have to exercise, we need a body, we need a mind. All these things, right? Well, not really. Because a being does not have to come into being, does not have to come into existence, does not have to come into manifestation and deal with phenomena. That is a cause of suffering. So it's far better to simply remain in our native state as a space of awareness. And that doesn't mean that we don't exist. We certainly exist on some level, but it's not the process of becoming that leads us into denser and denser spaces with less and less freedom and subject to more and more causes of suffering. So let me go on and read the Buddha's explanation of this process of becoming. Thus, from ignorance as a requisite condition come fabrications. From fabrications as a requisite condition comes consciousness. From consciousness as a requisite condition comes name and form. From name and form as a requisite condition come the six sense media. From the six sense media as a requisite condition comes contact. From contact as a requisite condition comes feeling. From feeling as a requisite condition comes craving. From craving as a requisite condition comes clinging or sustenance. From clinging or sustenance as a requisite condition comes becoming. From becoming as a requisite condition comes birth. From birth as a requisite condition, then aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, distress, and despair come into play. Such is the origination of this entire mass of stress and suffering. So this is the process of dependent origination. It starts from a very subtle beginning. Consciousness in name and form. Ignorance and fabrication. And from there, it gathers momentum, coming down through the process until actual becoming and birth. And because of birth, then there is growth, maturity, aging, decay, and death. Suffering. Now, we can visualize this process as a complete cycle of life. And what happens at the end? Then the being says, oh, that was terrible. I missed my chance to enjoy ecstasy to enjoy the delight that I really wanted. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and do it all over again. 
I'm going to start a whole bunch of fabrications and create another cycle of becoming. So this is going on on the level of lifetimes. It's also going on on a level of day-to-day -day existence where we choose by how we direct our consciousness the kind of being that we're going to bring into manifestation. I remember one time I was living in Mexico City and even though I was in a nice part of town, it was right underneath the approach to Mexico Airport. And it's a big airport. Every 90 seconds, there's another plane coming in. And so it was very hard to create any kind of concentration. And for the first few weeks I was there, I was kind of going nuts. So one day I was out for a walk. And here comes another plane, and I'm going, oh, this is miserable. And then I realized, wait, I can create misery for myself. Or I can create happiness for myself. I can get into it. I can start to uh, identify the planes. I can start to count the planes. I can start to think of how I can get the, my work done in the 60 seconds between each plane. I can start looking at this as an opportunity instead of as a problem. It's up to me. So in that way, we can create a state of mind. We can create an attitude, a point of view. We can choose whether we want to be happy or sad, whether we want to have pleasurable contacts or displeasurable contacts. It's up to us. And this is an effort of will. This is a choice that we have at every moment. So we cannot deny the power of choice by claiming to be subject to our karma. That's a, 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 an excuse to be mediocre. That's an excuse to suffer. Okay? So instead, the Buddha is saying, by directing our consciousness in a certain way, then we can overcome this tendency towards clinging and craving. And we can uproot craving at its source and attain Nibbana. And of course, the method of the Buddha begins from controlling this craving. But it certainly doesn't end there. So that would tend to diffuse the arguments of those who try to equate the path of the Buddha with morality. Religious morality is good in a sense that it gets us to restrain our activities. It gets us to control our desires, at least to some degree. But controlling desires by force of will is not a very satisfactory solution. It's certainly not a complete solution. What we have to do is go much higher on the chain of dependent origination, much, much subtler to the level of fabrications, name and form and consciousness. On that level, just a tiny change that uses a very small effort can totally alter the result. That gives us the leverage we need to actually attain Nibbana. Sabbe Satta Bhavantu Sukhi Bhavantu Sukhi Tattah